Hey everybody, we're going to learn today how to set some copy inside of Illustrator and uh, really get a handle on using typographic tools and, and making just simple text look great um, in any design project. So what we're going to do first is we're going to go get some copy. So I'm going to pull up in my browser here and I'm going to go to a great website that I love to use called Lipsum. And this website really is just here to generate um, dummy text and lorem ipsum is something that designers have been using for a very long time you can read on the website about it um, and we're just going to grab now let's get two paragraphs worth of lorem ipsum okay so here it is and of course because it's free the website has a lot of ads but what you can do now is just sort of copy those two paragraphs they're nice and healthy paragraphs and then just command C so that way we have them copied and we can use them um, inside of Illustrator. Okay, so in Illustrator there's two kinds of type boxes that you can use when using the type tool. The first one is if you just choose the type tool and then just click, you get a single line of text. All right, and you can do a lot of things with this and you have a lot of control, but if I wanted to make this into a paragraph, um, I would have to do returns and that's not very efficient. Okay, but this is great for like a title or just one block of text, or I shouldn't say the block, but one single line of text that's very, very useful. But if we also use the type tool and then we click and drag and make a box, then we have a controllable text box here that we can you know, use for paragraphs and things like that. And one of the greatest features of it is that when I drop in a large block of text, if I need to sort of resize this area, I can change the, the width of the box here and you can see that my, my copy wraps, okay, that it drops down in lines and I really just have nice control over how this goes. I prefer to work this way when I'm working with copy. I generally do it just because I find that this sort of option is always something that I need to go back to later on and it's just easier um, to me in terms of my workflow. So again, we have the two options, the headline, and then sort of working with the, the body copy. Okay, so I'll come in here and I'll add a nice headline. So we'll say uh, title of article. Okay, and I have this nice box here and I'm holding shift, right? Because whenever I scale type, I can, uh, uh, I don't want to stretch it. So I'm going to hold the shift key to constrain proportions. Now, it's a good point that I just made here is that if I try to scale this, I can't. I'm really just scaling the box. Okay, and notice it, it constrains the proportion, but I'm not having control over the type. So that's a really good difference to see how the um, single line text box versus the type area or text area tool really works. So that way we have control over what it is we're doing. Now in Illustrator, you have a couple of type palettes that you can have access to. And first one here is character, and I'll bring that into view here. You can see it's it's a standard character editor. You can change your typeface here and choose all the ones you have on your machine and the type style. And then you can change a bunch of options about the type in here. And we're going to learn about these in this tutorial and uh, take advantage of them. So first thing that we're going to learn to do here is we're going to learn how to lead, okay? And what leading is, is leading is the space in between the lines of type. So if you look at this type area here, you can see the type is pretty close together and there's all the baselines of the type, okay? So leading is a really easy thing to do and it actually can add more nice space and breathable room to your type and make it very readable. So I always lead. It's, it's something that I, I can't avoid. So here we go. We're going to quickly lead this type. Now I can actually lead in this tool palette here. And as you can see, there's this little um, menu right here that when I click on it, right, it shows really A on a line and A on a line with, a, with an arrow between it, that it allows me to lead in the space. And you can see I can make this nice and breathable. When I take that off, that copy is way more readable. I haven't even changed the size and it's easier to read. And that just shows you the power of the positive uh, aspects of the type to the negative space that it sits on. But here's a nice fast way to kern that uses the same increment sequence, but you can do it with keyboard. So if I hold the option key while I've selected the type area with the black arrow, and then 
the up and down key you can see look at that I've got the nice ability to either lead too tight that it's unreadable or open up the leading so it's nice and breathable okay so that is leading it's a very powerful thing it can take normal boring block desert like copy and make it very open and flowy and readable so that's one thing that I like to do another thing that I like to do is something called kerning and tracking okay now we said that letting was the space between lines and that really comes from um, typesetters back in the day they used to use these little slats of lead so that way um, they could space their type evenly so imagine doing this with with metal right we're doing this digitally it's much easier but with metal that's where the term comes from now kerning and tracking is a little bit different um, we're gonna zoom in here to take a look at this title section and what kerning is here is I'm gonna highlight the word title and you can see right in here I have a kerning just below the the letting section where I can now tighten the space between the letters here okay and again you can use the uh, the palette but I like to use again the option key and instead of going up and down I'm gonna go left to right and you can see with left to right look at that I can really space out or tighten this word now if you notice from the beginning I tightened, let me reset that to zero. I tightened just that word and I did that by selecting it. Now if I just choose the whole type area, then I'm doing something called tracking. Okay, so tracking is sort of overall where it takes an entire line and deals with it. Or I could do something called kerning where now I'm going to put my cursor in between these two letters. So Here's an interesting thing in typography. So every letter, you can see the, the T-I-T-L-E, right? The letters sort of jut up against one another in a very interesting way. Obviously, the T is much wider than the I, but if you notice here with the L, and these fit very geometrically, but the L and the E, there's this big gap of space here between the L and the E, right? And that creates what appears to be a lot more space between the letters, but really it's the same. Um, because you can see the leg here of the L jutting up to the ascender of the E is roughly the same here. But we could, and now I'm kerning, I'm holding on the option key just with my cursor blinking there, we could tighten it up. All right, if we move over here to the O, which is a round character, right, in the title we've been seeing all 90 degree angled um, characters, here we have a round character. Now that has the same sort of premise here where we can tighten those spaces because the round character seems to be giving off um, a lot more negative space when really it's this little line right here to the, to the ascender of the F that is needs to be sort of tightened but optically it could be that we need to kern so that way the letters look evenly spaced okay so these are the things that as a designer you will grow into really looking at and becoming more nitpicky so that way your type really looks sharp or you want to be able to look at it years later and say, yeah, I did that right. Okay, so that is kerning, which we saw. Click on the, the type area tool, option key, and then up to tighten and down to loosen. And then letting, or excuse me, tracking, um, which was clicking on an entire line. And I can do it here too. All right, notice I can lead, or excuse me, track everything open it's not as beautiful as as a uh, uh, sort of the tracking as it is set now you don't have to track every single thing type designers have spent time making these letters look good but you may find that once or twice there may be an opportunity to tighten things up or loosen them depending on the situation the design situation that you're in but mostly it's for big stuff like this for titles right where you go in and here another example the A and the R, because the A is on an angle, the R is on a 90 degree ascender, I may want to tighten it up just a little bit. It's actually closer than the R and the T, but because of this open space, there's the illusion, right? The R and the T um, also have that strange relationship, but so is letter forms. So that is kerning, letting, and tracking, okay? So this is enough to just get us started 
All right, I'm going to come back in a minute here, and we're going to learn how to lay out type um, in a page situation, like an article, and really do some fun things with it with some tricks. Stay tuned.